Hi again, it's Chrissy, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. Today we'd like to cover a little bit more about emotional cycles of deployment. And last video we talked about the first cycle, which is the anticipation of departure. This would be, I know that a deployment is coming up, I know that there's a separation coming up, and what, what will that look like? The second one is detachment and withdrawal. Now, attachment and withdrawal, I actually like to tell a little bit of a personal story when I talk about attachment and withdrawal. And it goes something like this. Uh, when I was a new significant other, um, I was used to, I married into the uh, service branch, um, but my now husband, um, my significant other at the time, he was getting ready for a deployment and this would happen on TDYs or, um, or short uh, business trips as well. Um, but my significant other would set up his bathroom counter, um, kind of like a workstation. Um, so he would want to kind of stand in one section, grab my shaving cream, grab my toothpaste, grab my toothbrush, I've got everything I need. Um, so I can stand here, get ready, and then walk on my way. Um, I actually, don't particularly like all the extra stuff on the counter. Um, but I noticed I had a ritual after my service member would leave. I would go in and I would uh, stop all of the grandfather clocks and then I would take all of those items off of the bathroom counter, put them in a box and put them underneath the sink. Now, uh, later, um, my significant other uh, later spouse would say, um, it feels like you moved all my stuff. Why did you move all my stuff when, when you were gone? Um, and I realized th that I was annoyed that the things were there, but there was actually a deeper reason I was moving all of those items. And that was because I noticed that if I woke up during a long separation, if I woke up early in the morning, um, and the first thing I saw was your stuff sitting there, I noticed that it would bring me back down um, to the emotional um, disorganization or the emotional upset that I might be feeling. So I felt like if I moved all of your things out, out of sight, out of mind, I was a functioning adult. I could pay my bills that day, clean the house, take care of my kids, um, be really productive at work um, because I had detached and withdrawn from the situation. So as we've talked about in the other previous videos, detachment and withdrawal looks different for the family than it does for the service member. Um, the family member during attachment and withdrawal stage might be very overwhelmed. Um, they might feel very rejected, abandoned, left behind, um, sometimes sad and lonely. Um, they might be um, overwhelmed at all of the responsibilities that they have to take on. They have to take on their responsibilities that they do every day and all of the responsibilities of that service member, um, double duty, basically. And then they might feel very worried about um, what's coming up, okay? The service member might be really excited to do their job, okay? It's time for me to turn off this home life because I'm now I'm going to uh, deployment life, ship life, underway life, all of that. Um, they might feel very upset and guilty for the separation and for the extra work that they're putting on their family members or for making them go through um, an emotional state. Um, the other thing, they might feel um, sad or lonely um, during that phase or they might actually push away. It's easier to deal with this if I push away the people that I care about. I'm excited to perform and, and then very worried. Um, the feeling of the unknown, the dread of the unknown that's coming up. Um, it would also be really wonderful if uh, we could all just walk through all of these stages, like I said in the previous videos, step by step, and know what's coming our way, but this doesn't always, always work out. So whereas I might be in the detachment and withdrawn stage, I actually might have um, a significant other that is in the emotionally disorganized stage, which is stage three. So it's good to know where you are and what's coming ahead. Again, Fleet and Family is here for you. Should you have any questions, concerns, um, we want you to know that we are here and we support you. We'll be looking so much, um, we will be looking forward so much to seeing all of you as soon as this is over. Uh, so please stay safe and healthy out there. See you in the next video. Bye.